All right, we've set up our client to communicate with HTTP API endpoints. Now we need a way to fire off that client. And we're starting to dive into a very, very important concept, not just for vPlay, but for Qt and QML in general. And that's how we communicate using signals. Signals, for all intents and purposes, are just events. So if you've used events before in programming, and if you've programmed, you should have used events before, they're just similar to events and subscriptions. So let's move on and see how we use them. So, signals. Well, let's have a look at this vPlay documentation page. You can see the address up in the bar if you want to read it yourself. And it tells us all about communication between QML objects. Now, I'm not going to run through this entire page, but it's very interesting if you want to understand a little of why we're doing what we're doing when we communicate stuff. And it communicates this in a game where you're shooting a monster and what happens when a monster gets shot. And it uses the, the fact that in any game, you're going to have more than one monster. You're going to have many, many monsters. But you only have one player, and when they shoot, they'll shoot a monster. And the monster, when it gets shot, will have some kind of animation attached to it. Now, you don't want to really store that animation in the monster per se. You might want to store it somewhere else. And all this documentation tells you is how to structure things so that you can use what are called signals to correctly structure things happening uh, uh, as a reaction to events that happen inside of your app. So obviously this page explains all of that much better than I just did. So if you want to read about it, then you can go ahead and look at communication between QML types. Okay, so if we go back to our software here, what we're gonna do is create a QML object, an item, that holds the signals for us. And that's going to be inside of model. Actually, that should be called models, but we'll leave it as model for now. We're going to add a new item. And we are going to call this logic.qm, or not .qml, it'll do that for us. Just logic. Okay, and why we call it logic will become clear in one or two lectures time. Just trust me for now. So the first thing we want in here is a signal that says use location. And that's it, that's a signal. Then we want another signal to search our listings. And remember this will pass in some string, which is search text. It will also pass in a Boolean saying if we should add this to our recent searches, we're going to add yet another signal to allow us to show recent searches. And we haven't really plumbed these in yet, but we will. We're just doing all the signals whilst we're here. Then we're going to have a signal to load the next page. And then a signal to toggle favorite with some listing data. Right, so this is just some logic that fires off a signal that everything else listens to. So it's basically a store for all of our signals or our events that will be going out to whomever needs to listen to them. So now that we have these set up, we also need to set up the places where the signals get fired and look at how the other objects, the subscribers, are notified when these signals are fired. 